Of course. I always watch what I say. Thank you guys for coming here today. Thank you. Does anybody here in this room farm? Yes. Yes, awesome. 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 Well, I think that hopefully we'll learn new things and I'll learn some stuff from you guys as well. Joy. Yes. Joy. I got water. I'm good. Joy, you can guys. you hear me? All right, let's get started. I wrote my information on the board here, Tracy Toffee. This is my number. You can call me, you can text me anytime. The point of doing this class is to help you guys, not just here for the hour that we're going to be together, but anytime you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, this is my handle, Threpple Realtor on IG. I'd love for you to follow me and I'll call you back. Um, let's see, just a little bit about myself. I've been licensed since September 2005. I am a full time realtor. I have two kids. A boy and a girl. One is 25, one is 23. One graduated from USC with her master's in aeronautical engineering. And my daughter graduated with her master's from Berkeley in structural engineering. Oh. They did not get the math chain from me. From my dad. I, I, I'm lucky I can do the first page of the RPA. So let's just put it that way. Um, I've been consistently farming for the last seven years. Consistently is the key word. I will repeat this throughout my presentation today. Anything you do and then you take a month off, it's like you didn't do that first month at all. You have to be super consistent. Um, my farm uh, consists of 279 homes. It's made up of three tracks. Where I live in Santa Clarita, there's tracks. You don't have a lot of that out here. Um, but it's made up of the Wildwoods, the Ridgewoods, and the Cedar Points. Now, some people might ask, why do you have a farm that's so small? Um, it actually works for me because I also do business in other places and I want to be able to pick enough houses that I can consistently farm to. Some people do like, I'm going to do 2,500 homes. It's like, okay, well, are you going to door knock that? Are you going to talk to the people? Are you going to get to know the people? Yeah. Some people just door drop. I don't do that. I can't tell you if that works. Have there been times I've door drop? Absolutely. But I feel like my... Um, my learning curve and my success has propelled a lot faster because I'm building relationships with people. Me as a homeowner in my farm, other agents try to farm in my neighborhood and usually what I get is something dropped at my door or like a postcard in the mail. And the only reason I look at it is I want to steal some of their marketing. Other than that, it kind of goes in the trash. I don't know who this person is. So something to think about. I've sold 65 homes in my farm total. I door knock every other month and average about 30 to 34 doors per hour. Just depends on the conversation that I have with people. I send something in the mail out once a month and I host two events a year. We're going to get into all of this in detail. And I post once a week in my North Lake Facebook group. That's the name of our community, North Lake. I built a Facebook group. I strongly encourage you to build a Facebook group for your farm because it is easy, cheap, Great way to get people, great way to confront people, great way to get to know what everybody's wants and needs are. So we're going to go into all of that. Maybe. Question, Tracy. Yes, you please. Drop, do you mean you just drop off a flyer? Yeah, okay. you don't knock. Just, you just kind of like a secret agent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. So what is real estate farming? If anybody doesn't know, it's ge geographic farming it involves marketing a target area a specific area or neighborhood consistently. So again, going back, I get this question a lot when I teach in areas that don't have tracks. For me, it was easy because I live in that neighborhood. My neighborhood is very secluded. Um, it's on one side of the freeway above the Castaic Lake. And I wanted to make sure that they marketed to all of the houses there because the three tracks were made up of houses that are kind of like for first home buyers. Then there's the middle version and then there's the, like the big house. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have a mixture of everything, and I have people that want to move from the move-in houses up to bigger houses and vice versa. So it kind of works. I suggest when you, well, we're going to get into where, how you should pick your neighborhood, but I think there should be a little bit of diversification in the farm that you get. Okay. Picking a farm. Okay, so picking a farm, there are five factors. Location, I feel, is really key. I tried adding another farm when I was doing 279 homes because somebody says, you need to add another farm. It's not big enough. 
So I did my research and I found a neighborhood, not thinking about how it had no shade. It was really super hilly. It was a little bit far away from my house. And I came up with every excuse in the book why I wasn't going to go and off that far. Don't do something that you're not going to commit to. That's really important. The count is really important. Again, using that example of somebody that's farming 2,500 doors, you want to make sure that it's something that you can you know, buy off and digest. How many people are in your farm? How many people? Um, are you? About 300. Oh, that's perfect. It's manageable, right? It's a manageable number. Again, going back to the time that you have to dedicate, and then I call upon my title rep. My title rep is really a very useful tool as a realtor, asking the title rep to check the occupancy percentage, you know, making sure that it's not all renters in there. The turnover rate, you know, you can figure that out on your own in your MLS. I usually go back five to 10 years just to see how many sales are in the neighborhood a year. This year is going to kind of throw things off because this year is kind of crazy, <laughs> but you, and you also want to look at the median sales price. So these are all things to take into consideration. The agents that I mentor, they want to go into farming and they'll say, well, there were only three sales last year and the year before there were two and the year before that was five. Don't do something that you're going to put all this money and time into if there's not enough turnover. That's really important to consider. Doing your due diligence is going to save you time and money. Some people are like, that neighborhood's so pretty. I'm just going to farm there. I say, like, well, what research have you done? Yeah. That's so something to think about. The other thing is agent domination. When I first started door knocking, there was another agent in that farm. His name was Tom Ac. He's no longer in the business. He was a phenomenal door knocker. And I probably should have back then, but I didn't thought, well, he's getting all the sales in the neighborhood. But then I started thinking, you know what? Everybody has different personality types, different people that they get along with. So I thought, you know what? I'm a woman, I'm a female. My personality is way different than Tom's. I'm gonna give it a go and be consistent and see what comes of it. So if there is a predominant agent in the neighborhood, I would consider who they are, what they do, you know, take that into consideration. Now, if there's three or four different agents in there, maybe look for a different. Oh, really? Yeah, that's my suggestion. That's me. I don't want to compete with all these people. So, okay. Kind of tough in LA, though. Is it because there's in flooded with agents? Yeah, a lot. Mark, of you can't yeah. say three or four agents. The market's flooded. Yeah, okay. Are they, cons are they marketing consistently? Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, Depends. Some are, some are. Yeah. Some are. Yeah. Okay. Are the flyers for 30 years coming in. Wow. Yeah. So that's different because yeah. where I'm from. It's a newer development. It's not well, I've been, it's 20 years. Oh, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. I think that the, the main thing is, is you have to do more consistently than what everybody else is doing, no matter what. There's this agent, I'll give you a quick story. There's a great agent in Santa Clarita Valley. Her name is Kathleen Bruno. She does a lot of business. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, she does a lot of business. And she's trying to break into my farm. And what she's doing is she's going around with a personalized CMA that's like 20 pages to every single house. I swear, I think her husband owns like a print shop. So I'm like, how is she doing this? That's like yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. But that's what she's doing. She's not talking to people though. She's leaving it in an envelope at the door. So when I see that, my first thought is, oh crap. What am I going to do this week? What am I going to do this week to top that? So there is competition. I think you just have to do more and more consistently and offer as much benefit as possible. And we're going to get into all that. But thank you for pointing that out to me about that. That's awesome. Okay. Any other questions about this slide? Nope. Okay, cool. All right. So tools. Um, a lot of title reps will give you a walking farm book that basically tells you the name, the address, where the house is. You can walk around with one of those. There's also some door knocking apps out there. <laughs> when I door knock, I always have some kind of marketing tool, some item of value to give them. Um, sometimes also they'll give you emails and phone numbers. I'm a simple person. I walk around with one of those old school yellow notebooks and a pen. Oh, and every time I, yeah, just like that. Every time I talk to someone, I write down their street address. If I didn't get their last name, I just go on title and pull it up. And I make a little note about what we talked about. 
Because when I get home from door knocking, the first thing I do is send them a note card, telling them how much it was great meeting them, great meeting their dog Toto, whatever it was that we talked about. So very specific. Um, does anyone have any questions about this? Yes. Yeah, so that's exactly the problem I've been having. I had what you just spoke on the uh, address, you know, whatever to the house is, mm -hmm. but I, I can't figure out which area that is. I mean, that's the two I'm not uh, being able to put together. Right. So if I knew exactly which area this address was located in, I would know where to go. I just had an address to the house or a list of these homes. I need to find the geographical area specifically where they're at. Right. See? Well, usually when you get your list, it's because you went to your title rep and said, this is the neighborhood that I want to door knock. Yeah. I want to door knock these streets in this neighborhood. Can you please give me a list of all of the names, addresses, emails that you can get? You have to go to that. But before you do that, you want them to check the turnover rate and you want to go in the MLS to see, I mean, occupancy rate to see how much the turnover rate is. I don't personally like using the walking farm books or the door knocking apps. To me, it's confusing. I feel like it slows me down. I just know the area I want to be in and just go knock on the door. Like, keep it simple. That's my motto. You just got to talk to people. It's so easy to come up with all sorts of excuses as to why you can't door knock house, just go out there and go on. Just make sure the farm you're going to is going to give you production. That's what it boils down to, because what I was just saying, I, I can't put these two together, yeah. so I'm going to just have to go do it myself. Right. Yeah. 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 Cool. Any other questions before I go on? Um, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm sorry, I can't oh, right. so you might have addressed it, but yeah. how do you, like, I'd love to farm my neighborhood, which is what I've been doing, but it's large. It's like 1,800 uh -huh. um, residences. So how do you pare that down after you get the information from title about the turnover rate and the state years and et cetera? How I would do it is if it's 1,800, um, boy, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, you would really have to do a lot of door knocking if you want to actually hit all of the doors. Yeah. But if your neighborhood is made up of different price ranges, different, it's all the same, then I would probably say if 1800 feels like too much for you, just choose what streets you're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. However, if you do a Facebook group for your entire neighborhood, it's probably a better idea to at least get something out to everyone to say, I'm here. We, yeah, we have a new ABC Facebook group. It's great. Go on there. You can post about your business if you need a babysitter. If you see something strange in the neighborhood, that would be the quickest way to get everybody involved. And then you just kind of bite off the elephant one bite at a time. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about how to uh, get to your database as quickly for free as possible, because I'm all about saving money. Because it's freaking expensive being a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Two questions. How yeah. many hours a week do you allocate to farming? To door knocking? Sorry, yeah, door knocking. Well, farming, I, a lot of my farming is phone calls, emails, yeah. Facebook posts, and all of that. But for door knocking in the summertime, not as much as I should because where I live, it's really, really hot. Yeah. Um, but I start really, really early. So I might go from like 8 to 11. Just one, once a week or twice a once week? A week. Once a no, week? No, I'm sorry, not once a week. I try to do my whole farm in one week. And it takes me about four to five days oh. to get through the whole thing. Yeah. So, and But then, you can break it up. So I'm yeah. trying to get through the whole neighborhood. And do you do that every week? Uh, like every month. Oh, once a month. Once a do, month, I door knock. Give yourself I, yes. enough time to door knock Correct. once your farm. Correct. And then second question, how do you avoid burnout? From door knocking and all this stuff, like if you get beaten down by people being mean or it's expensive to, you know, buy these flyers, or how, how do you keep yourself going for the long run? Okay. Any tips? For That's that? a great question. Yeah. So I try to find something to that isn't always real estate related. So one of the things I do is I hand out a vendor list, a vendor appreciation list of all the vendors for the area. People love that. If they're not home, I leave it at their door. Not everyone answers the door. Since COVID, I find it less and less people answer the door, but I at least want them to see that I'm showing up and the ring camera sees that I'm showing up, right? 
Um, the cost of the flyers, believe it or not, my lender, if I give him so much business, I send him the flyer, he prints them and gives them to me. Okay. Whether that's allowed or not, I have no idea. But we have a system because I refer him business, especially from everything that comes from the farm. Okay. I design my own flyers on Canva. Super easy. Yeah. Super easy. But you yeah. I mean, and I have some samples in here. It's like I said, I try to keep things as simple as possible. It doesn't need to look perfect. It's just about getting them the information that they need. Thank you. Yeah. That's very and I'll tell you something. I'm not, I, I don't always like going and door knocking. It's kind of like a love hate relationship, right? Yeah, Once I get out there and I start doing it, I'm like, this isn't so bad. This is yeah. fun. It's up and it's like, you know, three digit leather. Right. But it's getting me to start. Every time, every month, that's a little bit of a struggle for me. But once I do it, I see people's reaction, or I just feel like, you know what, I'm getting exercise and I feel like I'm winning the day. Because no matter what, it's not about getting the sale, it's about building the relationship. Mm -hmm. You change your mindset to making it all about building the relationship, then you feel like you won the day. And I don't care what anybody says, as us as realtors in sales, you just have to feel like you won the day. Thank you. That's very helpful. The goal is door knock your entire car once a month. Once a month, especially in the beginning, if you're just starting out. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, can I ask a question? Yeah. I know you might talk about this later, but yeah. like you knock on somebody's door at eight o'clock in the morning. I try to start at nine. <laughs> okay. So, you start at like, so yeah. how do you determine other than what's convenient for you? Yeah. Is there an ideal time? You know, I sit back and think, okay, people that are working aren't going to be home during the day. People that are senior citizens, you catch during the day. It's right. Like, is it better to do it on the So phone? when I start at eight, it's usually at like, for example, I just put flags out for the 4th of July and I started at sometimes 7 a.m. in the morning because I knew I wasn't going to be knocking on their door and putting it in everyone's yeah. lawn, right? So we're actually talking more about- Yes, yeah. eight o'clock worked for me when, because I live in a community that has tons of kids. Okay. So I knew they were dropping kids off at school and they were going to usually be home by eight. I don't worry so much about getting hung up on whether or not people are going to be home or not, because there's no way to figure that out. Okay, that's what I put Yeah, okay. it doesn't matter. Okay. Just do it. Okay. Yeah, because I'll drive myself crazy if I'm like, well, I think what everyone will be home at six. Huh? What if, what if, what if. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it. And they'll see you on the ring, regardless. My husband wants me to like talk into the ring and like, <laughs> and I'm like I hope he's watching and hearing everyone laugh because I'm not doing it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not doing that. Okay, moving on. My husband's a team leader at the uh, Keller Williams in Westside. Okay, I already did that one. Oh, I went the wrong way. Okay, so study your farm, you're the expert. Let's talk about this. So one of the things I used to do in the beginning is I would, uh, well, let me start over. When I first started in real estate, I was like, I'm going to do door knock. I'm a brand new agent. I've only been an agent for two months. This is a true story. I went around door knocking um, my mother-in-law at the time, her apple pie recipe, because I thought her recipe is amazing. Why would it ever want this recipe? And that was like the only thing that I door knocked. And then later that week, I met with my real estate coach and he's like, so how was your door knocking? I'm like, it was okay. Like, then he's like, well, what did you hand out? And I showed him. And we had this very big conversation about how that doesn't do diddly squat. That's okay if you want to add it to something, but an item of value is not a recipe for an apple pie. An item of value is they always want to know what their home is worth, what's going on in the area, what's going on in the city, any upcoming events any upcoming like shredding events or what have you, whatever it is, it has to be an item of value. So when you go around giving comps, you have to do closed only. If it's actives or pendings, you have to ask for permission first. I'm assuming everybody knows this, but yeah, you're not supposed to be advertising actives or pendings. You'd be in trouble. I've, I've been reported and I've had other, no other agents have been reported. So just FYI. Um, expired, if you know of an expired listing in the neighborhood, you've got to door knock them ASAP. Because most people call, they don't door knock. So you've got to go and do that. And know the different tracks, floor plans, the square footage. The best you know about the neighborhood now, if you're like, well, this neighborhood, I've never been inside of the houses, just pull it up on the MLS. <laughs> just pull it up on the MLS, learn about all the different floor plans and events, that square footage, things like that knowing what's in the area, the schools in the area. I always think it's important to know about the schools in the area because let's say I'm door knocking him and he has a little girl, I'm gonna say, oh, does she go to North Lake? What grade is she in? 
you want to be able to sound like you're the area expert, right? If they have an HOA, do you guys have HOAs out here? Homeowners Association? Okay. So I go to the HOA meetings in the beginning. I don't know because they're really brutal and everybody gets to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want really to get involved in that. Yeah. Like, I want to be Switzerland. I want to be Switzerland. So go to all the HOA meetings because you are going to learn a lot of great things there. Plus, the other thing is the board knows that I'm a real estate agent, and once in a while, they'll say, hey, what are your thoughts on this? And I'll give my opinion, although I try to make my opinion as neutral as possible. Meet with the HOA president. So just so you know, when we built the Facebook group, our Facebook group has over 300 people. There's 200, actually, I'm sorry, that's over 600 people. We have 279 homes. We have a lot of people in our Facebook group. It's important to make it clear that your Facebook group has nothing to do with the HOA. People have a very weird love hate with their HOA. So meeting with the HOA president, I didn't ask for permission to say I'm building a Facebook group. Yes. I'm, I'm just curious, are you talking about HOAs of community development? Yeah. Because our HOAs are mainly buildings and condominiums. Yeah, that too. Okay. Same thing, the HOA. If you write a check to an HOA or the homeowner writes a check to the HOA every month, the HOA is going to be meeting and talking about that development or things happening in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a condo or a single family residence tract, either one, it's important to know what's happening. We actually have one in my neighborhood. Right, which is great. But when it's a building that has like one or two bedroom units, it's, it's a little bit more contained self-contained but if you feel like you might be able to get into those well meetings. you might you're going to meet people i always encourage yeah. people to go somewhere where you're going to meet people you know yeah. you're not wearing like a badge it's like oh, i'm a realtor you're just going to get information and meet people and know what's going on in the neighborhood because when you door knock chances are there's going to be something you learned at the hoa that people may not know about and again it's all about sounding like they're the expert right yeah you want to know about their upcoming events, projects, concerns, etc. And then also about the surrounding areas. My example, knowing when the, what the schools are, the new restaurants, parks, and activities. My husband is very brilliant. He was like when he used to farm before we met, he used to know like how many street lights were on the street and the fire hydrants and all that. I'm like, nobody cares. But he thought that it was important to know everything about the neighborhood. All right, who's your husband? <laughs> his, name? his name is Frank. Frank Bernardo, that's my hubby. Okay, I'm moving on. Okay, prospecting. Okay, so I think I said this already. Mindset, it's not about selling sales or you. People can smell desperation. This is so true. And this was a big lesson for me when I was new because I wanted my first sale so bad, so badly. And I had so much desperation. I, I had like commission breath. Basically, just trying anything and everything I could to get the sale. And that's not how you get the sale. You get the sale by building the relationship. It's about helping people, building relationships, and making contacts and adding them to your database. I want to give you a really quick story. Um, someone in my farm that I don't knock on our house once, I think she's come to a couple of our events that we do. And I put her in my database because I always put people in my database that I've met and I'm starting to build a relationship with. She called me the other day. First, she um, audio called me through Facebook and I didn't pick it up. And then she texted me and she said, um, Tracy, this is Kimmy. I'm from North Lake. Um, I wanted you to know that my son is out looking at houses with his fiance with some random realtor that he found on Zillow and they're looking at houses in the $900,000 range and I need to put the kibosh on this right away and I want you to help my son because he just picked some random person and I was like absolutely I would love to help your son thank you so much for calling me I really appreciate that she goes I'm going to have my son call you right now so all the times that I talked to Kimmy it was not about selling her house it was not about helping her buy a house. It wasn't about any of that. It was just about building a relationship and giving her information about her home. So I just wanted to say it can happen. I've only talked to her a few times. But again, it's that constant contact, posting things on the Facebook group page. So in her eyes, I look like the expert, right? Okay. Any questions? Yes. How do you get people to, um, to sign up for Facebook? 
it? Like, how do you put it out there? That's a great question. Every time I send something in the mail, every time I door knock, or any time I send a mail card, or any time that I door knock, I ask, hey, are you part of our monthly Facebook group page? Every it, all my flyers are pretty consistent with my brand colors, and I always put like something on there about the Facebook group page just in case somebody doesn't know about it. Yeah, have you, have you ever gotten any pushback from any area people about having that like kind of like I don't want to say taking that page or taking that or whatever, but like the social, social, social presence, presence the social like media, that, yeah, specifically like um, I feel people. like it's been so much of a benefit. Nobody has said that to me. The yeah. only thing is, is one of the handouts that it kind of is how to go to the Facebook page. There was a pinned post that said we have nothing to do with the HOA, so please don't say anything bad about the HOA. Here's the HOA's number. Call them. Today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, another thing with our Facebook group page is we, if somebody says they want to join, we put a list of questions mm -hmm. like how long have you lived here? What's your address? What's your name? If you rent, when does your lease expire? We have people all the time trying to join the group that don't live in the neighborhood. So all of those come to me because I'm one of the admins. I have another lady up to admin with me. Um, I go on title to check. If the name doesn't match, then I reach out to the owner that does match with that address. And most of the time, they're like, I have no idea who this person is, saying that they live at this address. Oh. So then I decline. What if it's somebody who's looking to get into the neighborhood? I mean, would you consider that person? Um, probably not. What I say, because I've had that too, is there's a house we wrote an offer on and I want to join the group. I say to them, that's great, that's fantastic. Once you close escrow, circle back to me and I'll make sure you get in there. Yep. Because I just don't know how true that is. People lie a lot, unfortunately. Well, people can follow the Facebook page without being a member, can't they? Um, I don't think. Is it public or private? private uh, the closed group. Why, what's the reason for that? Yeah, the reason for, for the closed group. Um, no, I know what, why a lot of people have closed groups, but what's your particular reason for closing the group to other people that don't live in the neighborhood? Because this is about our community. This is about our neighborhood. It's about specific things about our neighborhood. Like I said, we're very remote. We're not like here in the city of LA where all the houses are very, very close together. It's kind of like its own little neighborhood up in the hills. So that's why we have it as a closed group. Um, it's been really helpful because we get a lot of fires up there. Um, it's a very small community. Everybody knows everybody, that type of situation. So that's why. Um, also, to be completely honest, I don't want, how do I say this? There's other agents in my neighborhood, other realtors, and they're part of the Facebook group too. Yeah. But all those other people that are trying to dorm off the neighborhood, they try to join the group. And they because <laughs> I worked really hard for this this farming. Yeah. Like this is my turf. Yeah. yeah. So those are some of the reasons. Any other questions before I go? Yes. Yeah. With naming the Facebook group, do you name it? Is it kind of like a community name? You don't it, name it Realtor Group. No, no, no. Location. No. You name it. It's no. It's like, the North Lake Neighbors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Neighbors. So you use yeah. the word neighbors. Thanks. North Lake That's Neighbors. Right. Yeah. And I also started it with one other person that lives in the neighborhood strategically because I didn't want people to think this was just a realtor space. Yeah, that's what I, who did you team up with? A lady that lives in the neighborhood. She actually eventually went, is sitting on the board of the HOA. Oh. She's just a homeowner, stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Great lady that was friendly with everybody. Yeah. So when you added people, they're like, oh, cool, a neighborhood group. Yes. That's what they think. Yes. It's yeah. not about selling. Do I post on there when I take those things? Yes. Okay. Or when I post something? Yes. I rarely ever do like a real estate video. That's on my Instagram, on my real estate videos, but I don't post it on the page. Thank you. No problem. So how often are you posting to that Facebook page that obviously it's not real, real right. estate related for the most part? So now you're managing, you kind of have this other part-time job of yeah. trying to- It's super easy. Okay. It's basically running on its own because neighbors post on it all the time. Um, the only thing that can be a little cumbersome is when people request to join the group. I just need to verify who right. it. So I usually let like two or three gather up and then I'll do it all at the same time. I post a lot more like, for example, um, brought a sheet. Where is it? Oh, there it is. On August 5th, 
we are doing our second annual block party. So I've been posting a lot about it. Like this flyer, I've been door knocking, door dropping, mailing, posting on the Facebook group. But it's our second annual North Lake Summer Block Party, free taco truck, free Kona ice, live music from an 80s band, a kid's bounce, bounce house. And I say, please bring a dessert to share, a chair to listen to the band, BYOB if you like, free food and water to bring your kids and family. I have pictures coming up and we have hundreds of people there. Um, but for something like that, I'll post a lot just to remind everyone because I want them to show up. We do two events a year. Um, we also do a Thanksgiving pie event where people come to our house and they get a free pie and we have drinks and appetizers and Santa. When I first started in farming, I thought this was back in my, I'm going to door knock with an apple pie recipe days. I was only in real estate for two months and I was like, I convinced a lender to do like a bounce house in front of my house and free ice cream. And that was it. Very small. I think I had three people show up because nobody knew who I was. Now, when, if you do an event like a food drive or you do a shredding event, like spring cleaning, it doesn't matter if you're new or not, that people are going to show up because it's a service for them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hey, on this flyer that you have, do you have a, the five you showed us? Is your name on there? No. Somewhere? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. My name is not on here. All my other flyers has my name, my logo, and everything. Because I don't want this to be about the right. estate. Yeah. yeah. They know who it's coming from, but mm -hmm. I don't publicize it. Okay. So, door knocking. Let's talk about that. Is anybody in this room door knock? Yes, love it, hate it, nerve wracking. <laughs> Why did you hate it? Mostly nobody answers the door. Yeah, so it's a lot of rejection. Yeah. Um, when they do answer the door, there's so many agents doing it. Yeah. They're just like, leave the flyer on the porch. Yeah. It's, it's very hard to get. Yeah. Do you find it's harder? I feel like I'm not accomplished. Got it. Got it. When you go door knock, what are you handing out? Well, yes. I started during the pandemic very early on, and I handed out a single roll of toilet paper. with stable here's what it's about the flyers there and just leave your food on the door like in two saturdays and i will come between nine and twelve yeah, yeah. and i pick it up and that's very successful a lot of people okay. i love it yeah i love it do a food drive what else i can't think i did um, a call party at the park uh -huh. which bring your dogs oh i love that you know, and i'm raffling off a gift card to at Smart or something, okay. and that was yeah. successful. Mm -hmm. I did last year a uh, backpack drive for the school. Oh, wow. You know, donate backpacks and books and crayons. Yeah. And things. So that was good. So, I mean, in that sense, that's more successful than just. Yes. Nothing. I feel like it's got to be a mix. Yeah. You got to do a mix right. of so all that. Mix um, have you ever done a vendor list? No, I jotted that down. That, that I'm telling you, is probably the best thing I've ever done. But I done. have had someone say to me when I door knocked, like, hey, do you know anybody, you know, that yep. could do my uh, gutters? My gutters are falling. I said, I do. Yep. And I send out once a week on Friday a newsletter, things to do in LA this weekend, which I get a tremendous amount of open rates and a tremendous amount of feedback. And on it, I say, as a realtor, I can be a resource for you. I have access to roofers and haulers and all sorts of people. And I do get people calling me yeah. to 
if you actually make a list, like the next time you join, I suggest you say to people, next month I'm coming out with a vendor list. Do you know anyone that you swear by that is an amazing electrician, plumber, or if you have your own personal business, I would love to put it on my flyer to send out to the neighborhood. I get so many calls of random people asking me, who does retrofitting? Who does um, remodeling? Who does this? Who does that? And those people eventually end up working with you. So the door knocking, I understand, feels very generic. It's not as one on one, but if you sprinkle it in with those little events that you do, it, it expedites things. So, good I job. Have a question about yeah. the drives. Like, so if you're stapling it to a bag or something like that, that's great. It, that is to get your like name recognition out. Mm -hmm. So, is there like how much real estate e stuff would you put on that flyer that you stable to the back, or is it just like a tiny little signature? Yeah, we just said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, right. Yeah. Thank you for joining in last year. We're doing it again. Let's make this an annual thing. Here's who we donate to. This is what they need. I did the stupidest thing. I just want to say I did a drive. I did food drive in the fall, and it was great. And so many people came, and I asked them to drop them items on my porch unless they needed a pickup, which yeah. I'd be more than happy to do. I had no idea who came and dropped them with me or thank them or the calls, email them. See, that's why I picked like, up. Oh, nice and thank you. Oh, okay. But so I have to say, say that you left the bag at your door, so. Yeah. But I have to say, too, that I did the food drive, too, and I had a, I've done it two or three years since I've done it before. Huge success return. Um, I don't collect people unless they need me to pick up. But I have to tell you, I was out walking like two months ago in my neighborhood, and somebody had a color sweatshirt. I'm like, oh, your kid goes to Howard. How great. Oh, you're in it too. And, oh, yeah. And you know, we just chatted for a minute as we're passing each other. And as I was walking away, she says, oh, you're the agent with the food drive. That's exactly it. I'm the agent of supplies. Yeah. So it's like, even though you yeah. might not collect their thing, yeah. if they're getting another flyer from you, yeah. they're going to remember. Funny. And I did, a, I did a back to school drive too. I got like four people that responded. But, you know, you just, I did a Valentine's Day thing too, where people could give, um, you would drop off a Valentine's Day card mm -hmm. with your contact information in it, and it would go to another neighbor in the neighborhood. Oh, that's uh, cute. Um, just because, you know, I have a lot of senior citizens in our neighborhood, so okay. I figured you know, a lot of them might be alone or whatever. Again, I had five people do it. Yeah. You know, I, the, I mixed up the five, and they went, yeah. you know, and I delivered them to the other house. That reminds me, another thing I do on our Facebook page is for Mother's Day and Father's Day. I always wish everyone a happy Mother's Day or Father's Day, but I also post a week ahead to private message me if you're a father in the neighborhood, your name will go into a drawing for a hundred dollars. One year, I even asked all the moms to, to tap me or something to let me know that you're a mom in the neighborhood. I think I got like maybe 40 responses. I just went out and bought red roses and left a note card and a red rose in their mailboxes. Mm -hmm. So it's just those little, little things. things. Yeah, little things. Um, okay. Can I just ask you? So in your flyer, do you not believe what like a section where they can fill out their name, phone number for the for the food drive? No. So then how do you know that they contributed? I go around the neighborhood oh, again. It. I physically oh, go around it. and I pick it up. Oh, okay. And put it in my car and then I take it to the other okay. house. So you must have like a serious list of like, you know, what you dropped. <laughs> like, I know the streets. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know the streets. Like yeah. well, the boundaries. It's, that's my car. Right. And I was going to say with me, I mean, I, I get over 200 bags left on my porch. I mean, that's how yeah. much people. People will know. Yeah. And to me, I, at that point, it's not about me. Like the food drive is about doing a good thing. Yeah. And, being able to and you're making it easy for them. Yeah. And, yeah. and the bottom line, I don't need to collect their name and their address or whatever to add into my database. They're going to remember me when I come back around next year and when I'm sending and making other touches throughout the year, they put it together. Right. Like I'm going to be the agent that's not just about real estate. Right. right? Me personally, I would go pick up the bag so I know exactly who did it. To yeah. so send them a note card, just to take them. I can't do it because it's. I mean, I, there's no way I'm going to pick up like two, three hundred up. Yeah, bags. It's a ton. You know? Yeah, but that's the way I choose to do it because Absolutely. that's the time that I have to spend on it. 
I mean, if you you can do it, then great. Absolutely. Um, I work like two other jobs. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you guys. I love the input because I'm learning things too. Um, so let's talk about door knocking. The quickest way to build relationships is through face-to-face -face recognition. Doing a door knock is not face-to-face -face recognition. Door knock once a month in your farm to start. Handouts. We talked about things that are of value, right? Door dropping, you can, but I would not suggest doing it all the time. People respect the hustle. If it's raining outside, I am not going to. Oh, that's funny. I get listings from door knocking in the rain because people remember that. This is a true story. It's happened a few times in my farm. The next door you knock could change your life. You have to remember that. You just have to keep going. Consistency and timing. And anyone you speak with gets a note card in the mail with your business card or a magnet or whatever. And it's all about your name recognition. So my flyers, my envelopes that I use, I use the same logo, the Facebook group reminder is on there over and over and over again. So it looks like the same person every single time. That's the beauty about being with AW, right? Like we can create your own commercial. I actually, when I go out, even wear a baseball cap that has the real logo. Uh -huh. on it. Yeah. And I have had people say, oh, I know who you are. You're the guy with the hat. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just little things you don't think of. <laughs> I, I, I have a team. You do? Yeah. How many are uh, We have, I think, eight people on our team. Yeah. It's a little slow year this year. But everything I'm talking about, I do by myself. Most what the people on the team do, they work their database. If they want to start a farm, they start a farm. And we have a bazillion online leads that they should be calling the phone for. My farming stuff is solely my stuff that I've learned. Yeah. Um, okay, so farming myths. People won't answer the door anymore since COVID. I feel like that is incredibly true. It's harder and harder to get people to answer the door. I can only door knock in the mornings or I can only door knock in the evenings. I don't want to bug people. People won't answer the door because of the ring camera system and I might wake up a baby or get their dog barking. That's probably my biggest pet peeve is when I knock on the door and I hear a little yapping dog stop barking. I feel really bad. I used to carry in my back pocket little dog treats and I always ask for permission first because I feel bad when I'm bugging people. I feel though, however, I see a lot more people put signs on the door that says no soliciting, baby sleeping, no dog barking, blah, blah, blah. And I try to respect that, but I still need something on the porch. Uh -huh. I do. My argument is, and I learned this from my husband, is I'm actually not selling them something. I'm trying to give them some information that could be useful to them. That's my argument if they call me and say, I said no something. It hasn't happened yet. But I don't want to miss someone. My feeling is if it's the door that I skip is the one that's going to list for someone else. So I'm just very methodical. Um, okay, so let's go on. So any questions about that? I think that was your slide. We're, we're always <laughs> that was your slide uh, about when to door knock. <laughs> Okay, so advantages of a ring. I'll just go through this real briefly. I told you my husband thinks you should talk into the camera and do your spiel. Your interaction is recorded and saved. Multiple people see it. People will talk about it and no more wasted interactions. What I do is ring the ring doorbell. If nobody answers, I'll say, I'm just dropping something off for you. It's Tracy. Hope you guys have a great day. And I leave it at the door. Super simple, and I'm out of there. So that's my take on the ring. Um, okay, I handed everyone door knocking scripts. These are just my ideas. I think it's really important to make it your own. I always try to put my personality when I talk to people. I kind of like go with the flow of whatever is that I'm handing out. Um, I always say when I door knock, um, for example, I'll say, hi, I'm Tracy. Hope you're doing well. You may have received other flyers from me in the past or whatever. I try to remind them that I'm in this neighborhood a lot, right? I try to remind them that this is my hood, this is my farm. I'm not some newbie that just started going off. Um, I highly suggest doing open houses too. It does not need to be your listing. Even holding a mega open house. I used to do these a lot um, when houses took a while to sell. Because I would do an open house for my farm for the first hour, just for the neighbors to come and I would have bagels and cream cheese and coffee. And then the rest of the time was for the regular buyers that were coming to take a look. 
Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then open house signs with your name. Don't use the generic open house signs. Invest in getting open house signs that have your name for that name recognition in your form. Any questions about this? Where is that script page? I'm not sure that I have. Did they not get it? There should be three pages here. One is about Facebook page. One is about verifying residents for the Facebook page. Oh. Yeah, No worries. Thank you for saying something. Okay. We have done food drive, uh, clothes drives, the vendor list that I talked about, and a paper shredding event. The paper shredding event was actually really good. I called the paper shredding company. You could rent the truck for a couple hours. People come and get rid of all their stuff. We had Starbucks coffee, donuts, and people kind of hang out and talk, and people love that. Um, another opportunity for name face recognition and helping the community. Um, I talked about the updated vendor list, and we even one year did a holiday boutique. I noticed there were a lot of people in our neighborhood that either sold like pampered shag for those smelly candles or the <laughs> lip scents or all these like crazy things. And I put it on my Facebook group. If anybody sells any of these things, let's have a holiday boutique. And we had it at um, actually my friend's house that lives in the neighborhood that was one of the vendors. And everybody came through and bought Christmas gifts. So it was pretty awesome. So just throwing out ideas right there. Okay. So I mentioned before when I mail stuff, I always use the same color envelope once a month. I get my envelopes off of Amazon. Um, new listings or comps, these are my new listings or closed comps or pendings or actions that are my listings. A call to action, and I always mention the North Lake Facebook page. I also add something called my sold map, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Once you guys start getting closed sales in your neighborhood, this is my sold map. This is basically showing all the houses that I've sold in the neighborhood. So some of them I've sold twice or three times. Um, and this is just something that I always include. It's kind of like my resume, right? Yeah. So, you know, anytime you guys get a listing or it's pending or it's sold or it's coming soon, you got to milk it. Milk it, milk it, milk it. <laughs> I, if I take a listing, people usually hear about it four times. Coming soon, it's active, it's pending, it's closed. People aren't really tracking like that same house. They're not paying attention that closely. What so, color envelope do you use? Um, I was using bright yellow for a while, but that wasn't really my brand color, and I found some other. I'm just curious. Yeah, something that stands out. Okay. This is a flyer that we recently, actually not recently, it's back in 2022, that we sent out. Have you seen the sales in North Lake thinking about taking advantage of the market call list today to see what your home is worth? And these are the houses that I put. One thing that's interesting is none of these were my sales. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't know that when mm -hmm. we're looking at it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this because it's a close sale. Because it's a close sale. Yeah, public knowledge. So I think if you guys want to take a picture of it, you can to look at it. But I just think it's important to know that we get in our own heads thinking, I can't send out a flyer if it's not my close sale. No, you're the expert. You know what's happening. I'm not saying on there, we represented the seller. We represented the buyer. Oh, sorry. Can you explain that again? Yeah. You, so these are not my sales. You had nothing to do with Nothing, those. but they're in my farm. So you, okay. So I put this flyer together because those were the recent closed comps oh, for that month. Okay, I understand. Yeah. And it's truthful because I didn't say I represented the seller with the buyers. Okay. It's not myself. Thanks. Right? Okay, cool. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. So the Facebook private group page, create it and they will come. This is the best thing that I could have ever done for my farm. It will take off like wildfire. I promise you. I started this so long ago that people interact with each other. People ask me questions. I add people to my friend list from this group. Um, all the instructions are in there. I will tell you though, when I started this Facebook group, some of the directions might be a little bit different, but those are like kind of like the outline of how to do it. Um, and what I post on there is my new listings, um, in escrow listings, closed listings, open houses, but everything else has nothing to do with real estate. I would say every maybe fourth or fifth post is about real estate. 
And then I'm always posting in there about events. So do you ever do like a like a roundup? Like you're saying send out um, the month roundup, do you do one on the Facebook group? Like hey guys, yes. if you were curious to you know what's this month. I do both. Because for those people that I did catch at the door, they might see it on Facebook. Yeah. Do the same step. Okay. So on Canva, if I do it in a flyer format, yeah. I just do copy and resize and then make it into a Facebook post. Okay. Super easy. Though. So Tracy, just yeah. to, on this, what's that first post going to say if you're trying to create this the group? group? Yeah, it's in here. Oh, it is. Okay. It should be in here. Um, here we go. Pinned post. This is what you're going to put on there to let everybody know. Um, but then you want to post something else. Like, you know, you want to do a nice cover photo of the neighborhood, the pinned post, but then you're going to have to start marketing it. Right. It's no different than, you know, us realtors, we all have a website, right? Yeah. Nobody ever goes to the website because we're not really out there marketing the website because we know that people are usually going to go to Redfin or Tree or whatever, right? So that's why on every flyer, I have to have something on there about the North getting them to join. getting it out there. Yeah. It starts slowly and then it picks up like wildfire because it's like FOMO. Like there's a North Lake Facebook group and I'm not a part of it. Oh my God, what am I missing out on? So you started by creating it here. You yes. have a pin post. Yep. And then to actually get other people to join, it's through all the other marketing materials that they see it and join. Yes. So I can invite my husband to join and we're now a neighborhood group. Absolutely. And that's when and, I can start. But you got to start posting stuff too. You can't just leave this pinned post. Right. You got to start posting stuff like happenings in the neighborhood okay. or, okay. hey, I'm looking for anyone to babysit. Does anyone do house sitting or dog sitting? I'm looking for someone. Okay. Or you could post on there, hey, I just put together a North Lake vendor list. If anyone's interested, please reach out to me. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Events. We have done our Thanksgiving pie event every Thanksgiving. During COVID, my husband and I loaded up 90 pies in both of our cars and we dressed up like elves and we <laughs> so delivered cute. pies at everyone's door that ordered them. They had the choice between pumpkin and apple. We took three orders so we knew exactly how many. That was a nightmare day. I was so exhausted. Did you bake them? Oh, heck no. Okay. <laughs> like Sam's Club or Costco. Okay. And they're like huge. I yeah. do it for clients. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, we do the summer event like the block party. We've done spring cleaning events like the paper shredding or the flu drive or the clothes drive. In the very beginning, I did Bunko. I was a stay at home mom, just starting off real estate. All the moms wanted to do Bunko and drink wine. I also suggest another idea to have a, if you're living your farm, is doing like a happy hour at your house, invite people over for appetizers and wine. It's even if you just get four or five people, again, you've just got to start slowly building. During the pandemic, we did a North Lake cookbook. It doesn't have to be the pandemic, but I put on the Facebook page, I'm so tired of making the same stuff every single week. Does anybody have any great recipes? Let's do a recipe swap. And so people started sending me all the recipes and I put it in a Word document and I shared it with everybody. So we, now we have a more people. Silly, right? But I got people's names, phone numbers, emails, got spaghetti recipes, whatever. It just, it's just, you got to think about it like that. It's not about the sale, it's about the relationship. Does anybody else use Nextdoor? I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you, I mean, you're not supposed to advertise on that, right? I put my title on there so they you know. Can pay for, you can pay for everything. Oh, yeah. right. But I mean, within your group, are you saying, hey, I'm a realtor, call me if you need my help? They are the creative yeah. people on the next floor. Yeah. Because I was going to say, that. I mean, in some yeah. sense, yeah. I mean, yeah. what we're talking about, oh, yeah. Yeah. what we're talking about, doing with the next floor, yeah. 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 But you, no, like I said, I, I mean, I don't think my neighbors don't want to see like celebrity realtors um, soliciting them. That's like not yeah. really the focus no. of it, right? North, the the no. next door neighbor is a little Tricky. like a loose cannon. Yeah. It's very aggressive. It's, it's very powerful. aggressive, and that's why you want to create the Facebook group. Okay. Okay. You don't have more control yeah. okay. over the outcome. I mean, I guess I'm just a little hesitant. Like, is somebody in my neighborhood going to say, well, what gives you the right to create this? They want to create a group. We have next door. 
No. There's different some, somebody in somebody in my farm created North Lake moms. I'm not gonna say to her, what the hell? Moms can be part of my group. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay. You do you, I'm gonna do me. Okay. And y'all can join whatever okay. you want. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about that stuff. Okay. This is one of our flyers for North Lake Thanksgiving pie event. This is what we do every year. You gotta send in your order for pumpkin or apple, and then um, all orders placed by this day. I don't remember if this year was the year that we hand delivered, but now we just have people come to our house and we have yeah. Santa there. We do photos. Yeah. So, so, you, so by then, um, I assume you're sending this or you're putting this on like your Facebook group? Right? This is again, just like my block party. I door drop, I door knock. I've already been to people's doors three times for the block party oh. in my whole neighborhood. I posted it on Facebook so many times. I just posted on, on the North Lake Facebook page. You know that green screen thing where you do a wheel and you have like the green yes. screen in the back? So I posted photos from last year's block party and my face is in front of it talking about how great it was and you can come check it out and whatever. So, yeah, that's expensive. Yeah, the block fun. party is four thousand dollars. The four thousand dollars I have people help me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I give yeah. business to people. Sure. So I ask for help. That's why I only do two expensive uh, events a year because I ask people to help donate. Does it cost me money? Yes, but most of it is covered by some of my affiliates that I work with. What's your other event? I'm sorry. Baby. The Thanksgiving Pie event and the block party. Those are the ones that cost money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shredding event isn't that expensive. The food drive doesn't cost you the food drive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Where you get the pies? Do they give you the deal or is that cost? No, I wish they did. <laughs> and every year the pricing goes up. In yeah. fact, when the last one, we just figured it was the same pricing from last year, but yeah. like for everyone, everyone's excuse is, you know, everything's more expensive. Supply chain. Yeah, it was so, it was Costco. a shocker. Costco or Sam's Club, you kind of switch off. Yeah, but you were. Oh, but you can get a big, huge one at Costco for sixteen. Yeah, you can feed a two families. Yeah. You can have a half a try. I think yeah. the, I think the pricing is like nine dollars and twelve dollars. Okay, so that's not that's a lot better. This was the last block party we did. That's my sister, so I did a deal. My sister's an Indian. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I hire her. They're amazing. They are amazing. But I mean, I pay them, but I get a discount. Um, so they performed, and this is again our flyer. All of the visitors welcome. Now I'm just showing you guys some of my marketing stuff. This was a post that I did on our North Lake Facebook group three days in a week at North Lake Block Party. I am like constantly, constantly reminding people because my biggest fear is no one's going to show up. What am I going to do with all that taco meat? <laughs> okay, this is uh, this is the year we hand deliver the pies. Oh, that's so scary. So, yeah, this is this. This is at the block party, all the kids in the bounce house. This is our street with all the people. It was crazy. It was totally worth it. It was so hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was fun. People enjoyed it. It gives the kids something to do. Um, <clears throat> more pictures. And, and, you're, and you're at the forefront of ensuring that there's a community. You're promoting yes. that. Yes. Absolutely, it's all about the community. I'll tell you a story really quick. Uh, I was inside the house and my husband gets home and says, there's an ambulance outside the neighbor's house. I'm like, there is? And I got ready really fast into my pajamas, turn some clothes and ran outside. And it turns out one of our neighbors, her husband hasn't been doing very well. He has Alzheimer's. And I guess he got out of the house and was wandering around in like 105 degree weather. My neighbor saw him and called an ambulance because he was like hunched over the mailbox mm -hmm. and called an ambulance and then came out there and I went outside and I recognized his wife and I, she saw me and she gave me a big old hug and I said, I'm so sorry, is everything okay? What, what can I do? What's going on? She told me what happened. She's like, I have no idea what to do. So the next day I got on the phone with the Alzheimer's Association, got her information, called her, sent her the information of who to contact. She's expecting a call. She's going to help you out. Those are the types of things in your farm, that's your family. Mm -hmm. Can't stress that enough, that's your family. And it's about, again, building relationships on the boxes. Okay. Um, my sister, mm -hmm. taco <laughs> truck. This, is, this taco place has a restaurant in the city and everyone loves the tacos, so. Just a little bit more. 
community. Community. In the beginning, I did Bunko. I hate Bunko, but it was fun. <laughs> it's Bunko. Bunko is like a dice game. Oh. But all the ladies get together and we drink wine and it's fun. <laughs> Don't do the wine at the Bunko. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, so this is towards the end. So this is about taking your foot off the gas. Can you imagine all this work I put into it? I dream about moving. I dream about moving up north to be near my daughter or doing anything. And my biggest problem is, is I have invested so much time and money and effort into my farm. It's yeah. hard to leave. So really, if you put any time and effort into it, if you're going to stick around, if you're going to be in real estate a while, you have to take it seriously and really commit and be consistent. Um, being aware of your surroundings in public. Um, I used to be a really crazy driver, like a really crazy driver. And uh, sometimes I have a potty mouth, and sometimes <laughs> so, like, I, I am not kidding you. When you're in your neighborhood or you're in the grocery oh. store, whatever you do, you really got to be on your best. And I had this conversation with my husband too. Sometimes he runs from side the road, so maybe you can do that. So yeah, just be aware of your surroundings. It seems silly, but it's really true. Okay, two more slides. Sales statistics. I would take a photo of this. This is really important. This is about follow up. Follow up, follow up, follow up. I follow up with everybody until, until they tell me to die. <laughs> this is really important and it's so true. 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So you just gotta keep going. Wow. Yep. And then one more slide I wanted to show you. This is my favorite slide. Where did this come from, these statistics? Um, I saw it in a class on calling expired. This right here, it's Michael Phelps. I used to have this hanging in my office. This used to be me, still can be sometimes, where I'm always worried about what everyone's thinking or what everyone else is doing or what everyone else is doing to succeed. But when I do that, it's affecting my success. So just stick to what the plan is. If you're not getting instant results, just keep going. It's going to take a while. It's really going to take a while. If you're brand new, you just got to keep going and be consistent. I would give yourself a year to start getting results. So that's it, you guys. That's my army dumbbells. Thank you. You've been farming consistently for seven years. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about before your sale and after farming? Yes. What you know, right? So I've been in real estate for 17 years. Mm -hmm. My first year I started farming, but I wasn't consistent. My first listing came from home. And I would door knock, door knock, door knock all the time. So I didn't really know what else to do. And I'm a very impatient person. I have to be doing something at all times. Mm -hmm. So I was door knocking. And I remember the seller was a general in the army. And he gave me a shot to get my first listing because I was like constantly, like that last slave, constantly following up. I was like a little gnat. <laughs> like I wouldn't let go of the possibility of the savings home. Um, I was door knocking in the rain. I was doing all sorts of things, all kinds of flyers, items of value. And I would get a lot of phone calls. I went to one listing appointment, he pulled out his drawer and he says, I called you because of this. And he took out a stack <laughs> wow. of all of the flyers. So in the beginning, I did get sales in my farm, but it wasn't as consistent as when I started really putting the pedal to the metal. And in the last seven years, um, I think maybe I closed like, 50, uh, I'm sorry, less than 10 deals. And now I'm up to 65 deals in my farm. So it's all about the consistency. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, when somebody else gets the listing and I didn't get it, I'm really pissed. And the <laughs> first thing I do is I go on title to see who it was. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's people that I didn't build a relationship with. So, yep. I've gone on listing appointments in my farm where I do know the people and they still want to meet with other people and I've lost it there too. So it happens. It sucks. I've also had people hire other people, didn't hire me and it didn't work out and then called me and apologized for not using me and then ended up using me. So it's, you can't take it personal. I do, I take it personal, but you should take so, so let me ask you this, when you go on a listing presentation, they tell you they're going to follow up with other agents and meet with other agents, and then they call you and say, because you're a new agent, oh, I, want, I, need, I wanted to go with somebody with more experience. Right. What's your reply to that? So my reply to that is, first of all, I have a team behind me, because you guys have a team behind you. 
you have Joey, you have an escrow officer, you have a title rep, you have people behind you. So I always say, well, I'm not new, I have a team behind me. So, and I know this area very well, and I'm a great marketer, and here's all the marketing that I would do for your property, and I'm not scared of negotiating, and you just defer to some, talk about something else. I never admit that I'm brand new, ever, ever, ever. Now, I'm sure when I did my first listing, the person I was in escrow with was a very seasoned agent, and I probably was like, I'm going to be But once you get that first transaction under your belt, it all starts to make sense. You know, any other questions? Okay, you guys call me for anything. I mean it. If I should be good enough, you can talk about Is he the That's uh, the pile? Yeah, that is pile. Oh, I'm Alex. Tracy. Okay. If he wants to do further investigations, 
he's welcome to do so. Oh, he's like, go right ahead. Okay. So he's like, stop it. That's it. We're done. Oh, okay. Okay, Joey. So, <laughs> so Joey said, let him and so say whatever he wants. And after all that, yeah. he says, okay, he goes, well, yeah. Um, you know, my, my clients are asking for a, a credit, mm -hmm. you know, and assuming you're okay with that, yeah, you know, I'll have them sign on the phone. Yeah, that's all he had to do. Clients, you know? So we have 12. Okay, so we have 12. So that means Thank you. 